Oh, we're going to get back. I'm good. Dudling Grace here. Oh, Dudling Grace. Grace on the left, a girl horse. Dudley on the right, a boy horse. Grace and Dudley. Grace and Dudley. Grace is uh, about in the mid 20s, and Dudley's in like seven or eight, so Dudley's quite a bit younger than Grace is. Dudley is on the right. Right. <clears throat> My name is Amos. I used to be a member of the Amish church. I grew up Amish. Welcome to the next county. You guys see the animals over here, the petting zoo animals? Yeah. Did you see the pigs? Yeah, I fed the pig. You fed the pig? I like the yeah. The Vietnamese pot bedded pigs are named the Pastrami and Salami. Wow, wow. wow. Pastrami and Salami are the pig's names. <laughs> Pastrami and Salami. And then back there is a big barn where Dudley Grace lived. It used to be dairy farm years ago that it converted the cow barn to horse barn. And the little house, the little shed behind the barn was the milk house. The old farmhouse built in 1902 from Murd and Murd Hill Suites. Red Bruce gift shop, dining car, ice cream car there. Ice cream car, which is a new one, yeah. Kip! Are these horses five tails? I'm sure it's five tails. Part Toronto, I guess, at least part Toronto, I think. Yeah, I remember this. Red Caboose Motel here opened up in 1970. This place holds a Guinness Book of World Records for the most singly owned cabooses. 38 cabooses, the mail car, and a baggage car. Two longer ones here. Wow. <coughs> Two rooms each of them. Anybody ever slept here or sleep here anytime? Anybody ever stayed here? Nobody staying here? No. It looks really cool though. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I hope I saw it. Slept one a few times. The playground picnic behind the barn, also behind the barn, they converted the old grain silo into view tower. Climb the stairs, beautiful view from up there. Great view. Oh, Grace take a poopy. Oh. Small pipe attached to the side of the barn. The feed bin, the feed pipe, well, the feed, the feed bin up on the barn. This is the back piece of toilet. And look at that little chicken down here. I just told him that as a joke and he was looking at it. What? 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 And the rectangular things here are called cow trailers. The shops of cows, the cow stands two front fronts, the cow stands still uh, stands on the back, the poop holds the gutter, it keeps the feet away for selling their beans. So that's going to cut the tills back sometimes. The tills don't get all poopy. Of course, the foreman doesn't get to swap the face with the milk. You like the tail? You don't like, you don't like the smell, Isaac? <laughs> okay, we're going to the milk house here, the portable air compressor on the right. I just breathe through my mouth. <coughs> <coughs> 
Why is it all wet? Okay, just come on and make room for more. Okay. Okay. Wet from condensation. It's probably it's cold, from, buddy. This yeah, is it is. Uh, this is uh, this tank here. Milk. This is the milk tank. Oh, this is where we make the cheese. Uh, this is the milk. It's going to be cheese, the butter, ice cream, milkshakes. Yeah. So if the fuel feels cold like a refrigerator, it's basically a refrigerator, like a thousand gallon tank. Um, I think it's milk milk's here? supposed to be kept at a constant yeah, 38 so degrees. The state regulations wow. require them to refrigerate the milk of bulk tank, keep it cold, so milk doesn't spoil. Uh, so that, and the same decent motor that powers automatic milk machines will start automatically. Once the temperature milk boils down to a certain degree, keep it cold, so milk doesn't spoil. And they have five milk units, milk five cows at a time, back in suction, run with a big diesel motor generator. After each milking, they would run one or three units on the water flusher, clean them after each milking. And this is what they call a Sputnik. The bumper dumps milk in there, and the wheels over here once it's full with using the air pressure hose behind you. Yeah. And, uh, pump the milk in the tank using air pressure. Some Amish, some Amish farmers would use electric with diesel generator. Some more advanced Amish former would attach a long hose like this to spot and keep to the cow stable so that the wheel back and forth saves time and work. And the milk would pump to the hose from the cow stable directly to the tank. What they call a dumping station, like a pipeline. He will go out this way here. Help us up to the brochure of the farm. Oh, yeah, during the winter, you drive through the country water and water and water and water and water and water and water that small house in the former's uh, parents, parents lived. They were retired from the grandparents of that farm. And the farmer's younger sister and brother-in-law did the farming there, but unfortunately his brother-in-law passed away cancer last summer. So I guess the widows to visit the children and sold the cows. <coughs> so when the farmer retired from farming, and his son and son-in-law take it to farming, and the young married couple made the big farming into the farming and the grandparents, who retired from off and built a small addition to the main of the house to live there, the farmer that small house there was a rough story that farm lived there. <coughs> and uh, that way the younger generation would take care of the older generation because the younger people could go to the rest of them and there was a lot of reasons. All work for each graduate with the station stop at Rock It's much better. That's why I, I that's why I'm going I shouldn't have had him out down. I don't want to go to public show. I like it here better. I like it here better because this is better than public show.
Sometimes when we stop here at Carpenter's Crossing and blow our whistle, the ghost of old LNS number six answers us back. So be very quiet to find out if that ghost is out there. Too. You said to be quiet.
Then Lancaster County, there are more than 75,000 of these folks that didn't find lots of hard work and eagerness devotion. Just as their forefathers did when they arrived in Germany, Switzerland, and France almost 300 years ago. Everything has changed in that time, and everything about their way of work is largely the same as it was nearly three centuries ago. So very shortly, our track will begin curved shots to the left. Here now, at three months, place John Shin with an A-line of the Shadows in the A-line of America, where we the main line we're about to know is originally that of the Philadelphia and Forty Rounds in the early 1930s. Worthy of note is that the Philadelphia and Forty Rounds was originally surveyed to pass through the town of Stratford on the exact same route we're traveling today. However, just before construction began, there are two found it more favorable to passing to pass through London Place instead. For this upside, the townspeople, so they petitioned the state for their own railroad to receive it. However, we're quite glad that the townspeople got their own railroad. The Philadelphia Club Bureau did not last too long. They were bought out by the Mighty Pennsylvania Road in 1957. So Pensy made Lemon Place a major stop on our high speed in New York and Chicago, with more than 30 trains coming through here every single day back in 1998. Four mainline tracks were in service until 1961, while two of them were taken out. Two remaining tracks are owned and operated by Amtrak with more than a dozen trains coming through here every single day. However, unlike the Mighty Pensy, Amtrak doesn't bother to slow down, let alone stop for us. They simply fly through here at just north of 100 miles an hour. There is a great deal of history here among the Philadelphia folks. Back on February 22nd, 1961, President elect Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary stopped here to address a crowd of several thousand people on their journey to his inauguration in Washington, D.C. This event helped the Australian Bureau to purchase his very own passenger car. Now sadly folks just to record that three years later another special train came through here in the opposite direction. This was a funeral train and the barrier of slain president's body home to his family. It's went on. Coming up on your right next side you'll see some large white buildings. Those were originally the site of every last hotel. In the early stage of railroad and trains were indeed pulled by horses and one in place with a horse changing station. And we provided fresh horses for the train and refreshments for our passengers. Welcome to Paradise, change here for Coatesville, Downing, Hartford, Kale, Philadelphia, Trenton, Newark, and New York City. Four Points West, Langston, Middletown, Harrisville, Lewistown, Tyrone, Altoona, Johnstown, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. That is the beauty of our fast train to get for those 100 mile an hour trains. Folks, I assure you that this is Paradise. Now I know it's not what you're expecting, but look around you, folks. Well, I should say that this is Paradise. Well, you're in it, and let's face it, folks, this may be as close to paradise as some of us will ever come. Yes, Now we'll be here for a few moments while our locomotive on top of the east end of our train. Comes around us on the passing track, you'll see the urinate right. We'll reconnect on the last time to take this back to Strasbourg. I used to look like the beer. Now the track to see you right is Strasbourg Road Interface, where normally there are arteries the outside world. Several months a week, freight cars are dropped off, just as they were this morning. And our first crew came down to pick up those cars. And we agreed to our customers. Now our break is just making a drain corn and lumber. The small amounts of biofuel is fertilizers and liquid protein. Now, as I said, we typically use a diesel locomotive for this task. However, if the loads are large and heavy, we'll use one of our steam engines. The steam engine is the load for pulling our train today is the whole great west train on the island. This is Strasburger's newest and largest engine. She was built back in 1924 by the Baltimore Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She operated on the Great Western Railway in Loveland, Colorado, and she was also their largest steam locomotive. She weighs in at just over 210 tons, and her tender carries 15 tons of coal and 9,000 gallons of water. She arrived in Strasbourg in 1967, and for the last 50 years, she's been putting smiles on the faces of children, both young, old, and those who are, of course, young and hard. I'll be sure to wave to number 90 as she passes by us. Your engineer today is Spencer, and your fireman is Ted. Be sure to give them a big wave and a cheer. It makes them very happy. By the time we return to our station, Ted will have traveled a little over a thousand miles of coal by hand and his firebox. He will, just, he will have strategically injected over a thousand gallons of water into the boiler to make the sound of our train. So like I said, we've worked very hard to get us here. We'll work hard to get us home. We'd like to show them how we appreciate that.
does make them happy and decides that we don't want to pay him a fear in bustling down our period. Much better. That's why. I, I, that's why I'm going. I, I shouldn't have him out down. I don't want to go to public show. I like it here better. I like it here better because this is better than public show.
It's so much fun to be here. It's so much fun to be here. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. 
My way, please.
Mom? Mom? 